this bound for glory doesn't really feel like the strongest of pay-per-views the the card not ever so interesting maybe x division will be a great match the world heavyweight might be a good match the build up the interest hasn't been there like the opener we've got dixie cards are putting a fifty thousand dollar bounty on aj for whatever wrestler or whoever takes him out will get the money and the place to face Bully Ray at Bound for Glory for the World Heavyweight Championship. Does anyone get that place? No. We had Jesse Goddard, Chris Sabin, Christopher Daniels and Kazarian do it. They couldn't get the job done. Really put AJ over as this fighter. He's not got a contract, but he'll still do whatever it takes to face Bully Ray. And also in the opener... We have Magnus challenging Bully, saying he'll get the job done. He'll prove himself to everyone that he can face and beat the World Heavyweight Champion. But we'll find out more about the result later in the night. Then, for some reason, we had Robbie E defeating Christopher Daniels, uh, Eric Young and Hernandez. Okay, I really, really didn't expect Robbie E to get a win, even though he pinned Christopher Daniels. Right, so yes, Robbie E's had a pretty strong bad year, two years, or however long it's been. But that does not mean you give him the win on the go home show on a guy like Christopher Daniels. That I didn't quite agree with, but the match okay it was okay but the win oh, it just made me laugh i'm going to quickly get through this because just because my being in this show apart from the end segment didn't really hold my interest then we had gunner defeating nux i really feel that this should be the end of aces and eights all members have lost it's came down to the final two. Do we care about this faction? Do we care about the final two? Do we care that they may be involved in taking out AJ Styles at the pay-per-view? No. Like you hear in a backstage segment, they're ready to just leave Bully to go at it and face his own battles. Maybe at Bound for Glory then, there'll be a one-on-one -on -one fight between AJ and uh Bully Ray. Then we get uh, Samoa Joe defeating Chris Sabin. <laughs> Come on now, people. Yes, Chris Sabin may have been the World Heavyweight Champion, but did we really expect Chris Sabin to beat Samoa Joe? No. Chris Sabin weren't in that spot to do that. It was just a way to hype up the Ultimate X match. As after the match, Ares showed Sabin how to take down Samoa Joe with the drop kick. Then we had Jeff Hardy come out to steal the show. And then Manic being the last one standing in a way. So you got all the members of the Ultimate X match in the ring doing some kind of hype up for the pay-per-view. Do I really have a prediction of the Ultimate X match? I think this is going to be a way to either put Chris Sabin over as an X Division champion because his world title run seems to have came to an end now, or maybe this is a big build up to a you know give Jeff Hardy something to do again. But please give me your thoughts on who you think is going to be the ultimate X winner or the X Division champion at the end of Bound for Glory. Oh, well, before I continue anymore, two things I want to say. Ethan is going to be at Bound for Glory. This Ethan guy, I'm going to give him a chance, even though there was just something about his gimmick, his look, his attitude that reminded me of someone. Give me a minute. His name goes something like Alberto Del Rio. His attitude, his gimmick, his poshness, you know, get out of my face. The old, 
you know, when Alberto Del Rio first debuted in the suit, the arrogance. I'm not saying that Ethan's going to be like that, but there's just some traits there. But let's wait and see what Ethan brings to the table and what he's going to do at Bound for Glory. But moving past that character, we get to Buddy Ray versus Magnus. And this whole Magnus character, I'm glad that TNA are giving him week after week, month after month concentration. Something they have failed to do in the past. Right now, we're about to get a Magnus sympathy kind of thing. He can't get the job done. He's climbing that table, but something always knocks him back down. And this is where Sting, who gets involved when Buddy Ray is about to knock the hell out of Magnus with the ch bike chain. But it allows Buddy Ray to get the low blow roll up. And then you get Magnus being frustrated at Sting. I want to support Magnus, but I'm not sure how to feel about this way they're going with him. The sympathy route. The, um, you know, he can't get the job done, so he relies on Sting to put him over. The way that Sting's been put over in the past, like, no one can beat him. He's an old timer, but he's still got it. I wouldn't be surprised if Sting does win, but this Magnus push has to get the big payoff at the end, right? And one of the other big matches on the card is Kurt Angle versus Bobby Roode. And even though it's not had the biggest build, the way they did it tonight was let's give this match a meaning, let's get this match on the card and get people to want to see it. And the way they did that was mention the fact that Bobby Roode wants to be like Kurt Angle. But in fact, two years ago when Kurt Angle defeated Bobby Roode, it made Bobby Roode who he is. A better champion and a better man. And this time round, Bobby Roode will make Kurt Angle tap out. So it's almost setting up a submission match. A revenge match. A prove who's the better man match. And even though it's not had the biggest build, it's got me quite interested on who are they going to side with. Are they going to give Kurt Angle the win, who's not done anything for such a long time, as Bobby Roode pointed out? Or is Bobby Roode, after two years, going to finally get his redemption and beat Kurt Angle by making him tap out? Quite interesting, strong mic work. And he actually had... Bobby Roode locking in a um, Lord Voldemort crossface on Kurt Angle, making him tap out. So it's got a nice setup there. Not a bad segment of TNA. You know what would have been great in the TNA Go Home show for Bound for Glory? Is if Ethan was one of the wrestlers to try and take out AJ Styles. I'm not saying have him take out AJ and go to Bound for Glory to face Buddy Ray. But just have him there. Have him make an appearance to take out AJ. But instead we get to the main event segment. Which we have Ric Flair and Dusty references. Uh, Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. It comes quite comedy and really strong promo work from Buddy Ray. You know when Buddy Ray grabs the mic and he really goes at it. Really brings up the heel character. Really brings out the confidence in himself. I love it. Buddy Ray is gold classic. Love it. AJ Styles. I think he has to be good on the mic right now. To build up his part of the story. That he's going to do what it takes. He made one line. Which I think sums it. He has nothing to lose. But everything to gain. And that's what's going to be bound for glory. And I think if AJ Styles beats Buddy Ray at Bound for Glory, the Ace and Eight has to be finished. Because Buddy Ray would have lost the World Championship. They would have not came out to really help Buddy Ray. And the Ace and Eight have lost their matches. So it should just be scrapped, done, dusted, finished. AJ Styles is strongly back in TNA. And that's it. But the, seg the part I want to talk about is... 
when AJ Styles had the briefcase because Buddy Ray was about to forget about his World Heritage Championship and just take the money instead. But instead, it ends up in AJ Styles' hands. And all I'm going to say is, AJ, be careful that briefcase. That's the only money that TNA have left. Ba, ba, ba. Sorry, TNA fans, that's, that's that was really called for. And now you've heard my thoughts, people. Please share your thoughts. I don't think this was the greatest go home show. Mainly because TNA are not in the best spot right now. And the shows, the build, the story. It, it, it's basically there in our faces. Yes, I'm getting some enjoyment out of it. Some laugh. Enjoying the heel work from all wrestlers. The face work, it's getting there. But the heels are being put strong, which is a big thumbs up. But people, please share your thoughts. We'll have a conversation about it. And please tell me the good, the bad and the ugly of this show. Until next time, enjoy Bound for Glory and goodbye.